So, did you ever want to have a 2D element rotate smoothly in one of your Godot games? For example, with a nice east out animation? Cause this is actually quite easy to do, with the engine's built-ins. Now, just before we dive in, did you know that thanks to all of your amazing support, I just released an idle incremental game about stars and constellations called Lightem? It's available on Steam, for Windows, Mac and Linux, for less than 5 bucks, and it's basically designed to be a chill and relaxed experience, to learn more about the 80 plus real constellations, or just invent your own and create a unique night sky. So if you're curious, be sure to have a look at the free demo, add it to your wishlist, share it with your friends, and if you try and enjoy it, you can also leave a review on the games page, this is the best way to help support this project. But anyway. Okay, so suppose that you've got some 2D elements, or a UI component, like this gauge here. The idea is that whenever I click on one of those circles, one of those points, the cursor needle in the middle will rotate to face it. Oh, and as a side note, if you want to learn how to create this kind of custom circle layout, be sure to check out my recent tutorial on Godot custom containers. Before we go any further and into the real animation stuff, here's the code that creates this basic logic. As you can see, the top of the script sets up my click callbacks on the points of my gauge, so I first get the point at the center of my screen, since this is the middle of my gauge element. Then I list all the clickable circle points that I've put in this points node group. And finally, whenever I click on one of those points and its custom clicked signal is emitted, I call my move cursor callback function with the clicked object as parameter. But obviously, what's really relevant to today's topic is this callback function itself. In here, we first need to find the proper target angle, based on the relative position of the point that we clicked. To do this, we can first compute the position of the center of the circle point, then get the direction between this position and the middle of our UI, and finally use that direction to compute the angle of this point on the circle. Then all that's left to do is to assign this rotation to a cursor, and if we run the game, we get the setup that we had before, where we can click on the points to instantly move the cursor toward them. That being said, of course, you'll most likely want the cursor to animate towards this new rotation, rather than instantly jumping to the new angle. And for that, a good solution can be to use a twin. Now, if you're not too familiar with twins, I've actually made an entire tutorial on that topic, so feel free to have a look over here. In our case, the idea is that rather than assigning our new rotation directly, we can instead create a twin that animates this rotation property from its current value at the moment of the click to our target angle value over a given amount of time. We can use the twin method built-in that calls a function continuously during the whole duration of the twin, with an input value that goes from this start value to this end value. So here I'm going from 0 to 1, so that my v is the ratio of completion of the twin, and I use this ratio to lerp between my initial and target angle over a duration of 0.3 seconds. And because it's a twin, the nice thing is that we can easily add some easings, so that the movement isn't linear but has a little slowdown at the end, for example. If we try this out, we see that it already looks way better. Now our cursor smoothly rotates towards the position of the points that we clicked, but there is still an issue that you'll notice as soon as you try to go to or through the points on the left. Indeed, rather than rotating continuously, our cursor suddenly wraps around and goes the wrong way. That's because, given our computation, the value of our target angle doesn't increment continuously. In fact, at this point on the left, it switches between positive and negative values. And so the lerp built-in function, which is a pretty generic tool, doesn't know how to handle this properly, and it will need to go through zero again, which causes our cursor to wrap around. To solve this issue, we just need to change one thing. Instead of calling lerp in our twin, we can call lerp angle which is another Godot tool made specifically to update angles smoothly, and that will take care of that kind of problem. And well, that's it. 
If you try this again, you'll see that now our cursor always updates properly, even if we go to or through our points on the left, and so we get both logical, continuous movements and a nice animation with easings thanks to our twin setup. I really hope you liked this quick tip, don't hesitate to react in the comments and subscribe to the channel to get more videos. And of course, a huge thank you to my Patreon members for the support and to you for watching. And as always, take care.